Three weeks ago, I had the same problem on my computer. My storage kept filling up, and I brought it into a store, and they, they found out I had it set up to hard like run a backup and save it to itself. And so it was just eating up my entire storage because every time there was free space. But that's all right. Not good. <laughs> so we are Facebook living, just so you know. Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. A constipated computer, and that's what <laughs> I had. And I've got another four interviews to go today. I know I've got to be more technically savvy and super prepared more than this. And uh, I, I just have to say I've got a learner's mind, and I'm not going to judge myself. And I'm just going to learn as I go and try to respect everybody's time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, that's the way we're going to go. So I think uh, uh, onboarding videos. So uh, go behind the talk for two minutes. Tell me a story. Whatever you forget to say is fine. You already gave the performance, so no worries at all. Then we're going to have a conversation. Then we're going to go to the blitz round. Then we're going to have the final word of advice. It's a 15 to 20 minute interview. All right. That Make sounds sense? great. Any yeah, absolutely. Final questions for me before um, we go live, Liz? I don't think so. All right. Oh, good. Oh, great. And so, and then I'm sending people to your LinkedIn page, correct? Yes. Oh, yes, please. A little, little review there. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, we are live in three, two. We are live with Elizabeth Shazel. Elizabeth, are you ready to talk? I sure am. Thank you. Elizabeth Shazel is a senior at the University of Texas at Austin, majoring in marketing. Throughout college, she has pursued experiences that help her make a difference, invest in others, and grow as a person. Full of passion and curiosity, Elizabeth is eager to change and be changed by the world. Elizabeth Shazel, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. You gave a great talk called The Power of Letters, and I love what you did. I mean, it was. I'm not going to try to uh, uh, summarize it for you. I'm going to ask you to do that instead, but it reminded me of a, a lot of things. It reminded me of poetry. It reminded me of a little bit of neuro-linguistic programming and in, in the way that, that you can say things in such a way that it just almost is a little bit hypnotic. I mean, I just think it has really profound implications, uh, what you have discovered, to make things memorable and simplified and, and just more sticky. So please take us behind your talk. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a, a great summary. And um, basically what I what I talked about, as you mentioned, it's called the power of letters. And um, I was in a math class my freshman year where we were um, challenged to create a new idea about something we loved. And I have just been such a fan of words and, and poetry, as you mentioned, and language and what wh how that impacts us. And so um, what, what the talk about is this idea that I, I came up with where um, I, I ran an experiment to see if we can um, meaningfully analyze uh, words based on the letters that are contained within them. And so um, it was a very rudimentary experiment um, based on um, vowel sounds and how when we pronounce um, the two that are used are the, the E vowel sound and then the O and U vowel sounds and how when we we pronounce those in certain words, you know, our facial muscles change and this affects the what's going on in our brain and it affects how we feel. And so the, the really big takeaway here, well, I would say there's two. The first big takeaway is that um, there seems to be a legitimate connection between um, if we say the word cheery, we actually feel happier than if we say the word joyous because that word, due to the vowel concentrations, it makes us smile. Um, and then the second big takeaway is just that uh, – there's so many cool things going on in our brain. I think it's, you know, we don't we don't necessarily understand why we are impacted by communication and, and how we can affect others. And so I think if I could really have anybody get a takeaway out of this TED Talk would just be to continue challenging yourself and others to to figure out what's going on in our lives. And just, yeah, what I think there's so many cool implications. Uh, it reminds me uh, very uh, similar, and, and her name has come up in other interviews I've done already today, Amy Cuddy's Body Language TED Talk on yeah. the Wonder Woman power pose and just the physiology actually can determine your emotional state rather than the other way around. So, I mean, how much does that really, uh, that sounds like what you're saying, how much does that really factor in? I think that's huge. In fact, um, I, her TED Talk is so wonderful, and she does a great job of of really uh, 
changing the perception of, of proving that it's not just our, our brains that affect our bodies, but it's the other way around too. And so I, um, the, the math class that I mentioned where I, I had this idea was, was four years ago, but I saw her talk two years ago. And it was one of the things that, that made me start thinking like, wow, this is, there's other people out here that are, are kind of measuring and trying to test this perception of, um, you know, how, how can, can, how can we get our bodies and minds to work together better in order to like amplify our message or whatever it is? And, um, I, I have to say, I, I definitely used her power pose before getting up to give my own talk. She, well, she's onto something. You're not the only one. I think everybody I talked to today was doing power, ma- male <laughs> and female. We're, we're all power posing, uh, around Wonder Woman. I, I think, uh, that's come up like five or six times in my interviews yesterday. <laughs> I usually culturally appropriate uh, Wonder Woman into, into anywhere I can, and, and nobody has a problem with that, <laughs> apparently. So um, can you give us some, some more examples? So impl- implications for sales, implication for marketing, implication for just being able to connect with people and communicate in an ethical way. We're not talking about you know, Absolutely. pulling the wool on. I mean, you can, you can use, you can be Spider-Man and you can have your great power and use it without great responsibility, even though you should use it with responsibility. So these techniques can be used either way. You can be, you know, a great leader and, and your name might be Adolf, you know, and your, your last name may start with an H or you may be kind of on the good side. So we're talking about the ethical good side. What are some of the implications for sales marketing? Um, communicating, connecting, uh, uh, or, or, oratory, uh, all of those things. Yeah, that's, you hit on something really great there that we're seeing in marketing all the time is that we know what, what we can use to manipulate people. So we have to really make sure that what we're, the content of our messages is, um, yeah, for good and not for evil. And so uh, a great example, something I talk about in, in the, the TEDx talk is that, um, if you, if you're trying to create a brand, for example, if you're starting a company or, or a podcast or anything like that, um, and you're trying to come up with a name, um, if you know people are going to be saying your name, um, you should, you would be wise to do everything in your power to make that name, um, resonate well with people. And so one way that you can do this, um, this tool that I, um, talk about is, is really just another, um, factor that you can, you know, work into your calculus of how do I make my brand um, powerful? How do I make it stick with people? How do I make them feel good? And so um, yours is a great example. Be the talk. You know, that word be is it makes you smile. It's so, you <laughs> you're yeah, doing you great. smile, folks. <laughs> Love it. Happy, yep, happy just to be here. <laughs> but um, yeah, examples like that. And, and one of the things I also mention is, is music because, um, what a, I mean, what a perfect example of how emotions and sound and, and all of these different disciplines um, intersect and weave together to create an experience. Um, I think I think songwriters could really, really employ this tool and and try to make sure if, if they want their listeners to, to go through a certain emotional journey, um, they they could use this tool and, and craft their words, choose synonyms that have a higher concentration of E sounds if they're trying to make their listeners feel happy. Um, it's just a more visceral connection to the words and the ideas that are being communicated. So uh, just a couple of examples come to mind. One's a really easy example, and one is th- there's going to be a little bit of baggage on the second example. So maybe we work through this together, Liz. But the, the first thing that I can think of, you know, in, in the world of Internet marketing, in which we're, we're all uh, knowingly or unknowingly participating in, uh, especially if you're trying to build any kind of a name as a speaker or coach or, uh, you know, TED uh, alumni or anything like that. It's it's all about uh, getting word out. And uh, so one of the guys who is kind of a really, really big name is Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, and he's got this really cumbersome last name. He shortened it to Gary V, and it was like V-E-E for, for a while. And then he just made it, I think, a V, and I don't even know what it is right now. People are like just wow. using their initials now, and it's just really snippy and snappy. And they maybe they have to change their little bit of the way they see themselves in order to do that. But it certainly works out very good for the rest of us to remember and not have the burden of remembering somebody's kind of you know cumbersome last name a little bit and and reducing uh, the number of syllables that we have to think through or say through. So. Obviously, a huge benefit to anyone that can do that, including you, including uh, me. 
Um, mm-hmm. Second example, not maybe not so cut and dried. So I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm an American. I know a whopping one language, which I'm not proud of. Ugly American, you know, very, you know, that's politically incorrect not to be a polyglot and be able to speak <laughs> eight different languages. But that's, you know, that, that's something that I've struggled with. I'm thinking about so many uh, foreign students who I've met who are over here in the country and they're studying. And so, there are like two types of, of students that come over. The one type is the kind that they, they have an American name and it's not their name. It's just the name they, they picked or they selected. And it's always so much, I, I hate saying this because it, it just seems so ethnic, ethnocentric, but it, it underscores your point, Liz, which is I can remember those, those, uh, folks names so much easier than the ones that, that don't change it. And, and the rest of us have to like learn new vowels or, or new tongue positions to be able to correctly. And they never insist on that, but we're, we're, we're really, really, really in the dark about that. Now, so we've got a really big elephant in the room, which is, you know, no, Nathan, you shouldn't be so culturally insensitive and you should, you should be that. And I agree with that. Okay. Liz agrees. I agree. We want to be just so, you know, so elevated in our consciousness that we can do that. But the fact remains that for everybody else, the other 99% of people that that uh, foreign exchange student or, or uh, a person from another country, they're going to, it's, it, it's just going to be so much better for them if they adopt kind of an Americanized or Anglicized name or, or, you know, distort their name a little bit so that it's easier for the rest of us. Now, can you think of a more palatable way to explain <laughs> that? Because that's that it really proves your point. It's not really the point we want to make. But, you know, what are what are your thoughts? Or you can say pass if yeah. you really don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no. So so I think one important thing to point out is that. My, so my talk is less on um, the way that changing these vowel concentrations affects memory and more about the way it affects emotion. And so um, it's natural as humans that we're going to be um, better at remembering things we're more familiar with. And, and um, that that totally speaks to the point you're making about names. But I, I think one thing that may be interesting is, you know, if somebody has um, the name, you know, uh, Mark, you know, we, that name, whether we remember it or not, um, it just makes us feel, let's say, a neutral state. But if somebody has the name, um, gosh, like Becky, uh, Becky yeah, e, perfect right? example. I remember yeah, the e, so yeah, Becky. yeah. Like we may naturally feel, um, more inclined that we may have natural positive feelings towards Becky just because mm-hmm. when we say her name, when we say, Hey, Becky, Becky, how are you doing? Um, I'm so pleased to see you. Things like that. You know, it makes us smile. And so it's less about what, what we memorize and more about how, um, we feel when we're interacting with these words and with, with, if, if they're with names, then with these people. Um, but that's a really interesting point you bring up. Yeah. Well, and that was a great, perfect response because it's about the emotion. It's not about the, the memorability or the, the way, you know, it's about the, the way that we feel. So that's a perfect response. Yeah. You and know, although just, there, there may, I'm sorry, there may be a correlation between, you know, if, if we do feel more positive, um, emotions, then we may actually memorize better. And that would be, that would actually be a fascinating place to, to do further research on. You know what? I mean, I was, um, Case in point, so yesterday morning I was getting coffee at a different store that I normally go to, and I recognized the barista from not another coffee shop, from Chipotle, just because of the way she's just so very, very exceptionally kind, almost, actually almost inappropriately kind, because she calls you like honey or love or or, or something like that. You kind of remember that, and it's a little, you know, it's a little, I don't live in the South, so it's a little, it's a little, we, we don't do that, but it's so memorable that I, I'm like, hey, that's the, that's the love lady from Chipotle. I said, so that, that we absolutely remember that. That might be an interesting thing to research. I'm remembering my grandmother trying to get us to smile. So cheese, yeah. it's that E sound. It's whatever your grandmother says to get you to smile. And the word money also has an E ah. as well, and there's, there's a little... Figuring there's something a, out. Yeah. A little link in there, folks, as well. So, uh, you know, speaking of money, uh, I don't have any to give anybody today, but if you give your future TED Talk or branded talk and you do the work to share your idea worth spreading and it's good enough talk like Amy Cuddy, we might have other people <laughs> talking about your talk and cross-referencing 
it everywhere else. What I'm trying to say is it's time to have the blitz round. Liz, are you ready oh, for this? Here we go. I'm ready. Here we go. Now, Liz has listened to this, so she is absolutely ready to go. I'm about to ask Liz a series of either or binary questions related to the prep and performance of her talk. Question number one, were you selected or did you apply to speak? I applied. Just like the rest of us. Welcome to the club. <laughs> All right, Liz. Are you a memorizer, improviser, or a blender? Um, I'm a blended memorizer. I did a lot to memorize, but tried to give myself some flexibility to, uh, you know, mix it up. Seasoned performer or new to the stage? New to the stage. I have not. Um, I've done a few public speaking through organizations here at college and back in high school, but um, new to a stage like this, for sure. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? <laughs> Huge nerves. Very, very nervous. Um, but it, it helped me. I, I think I performed better under pressure. How did you, uh, how did you cope with the nerves? Yeah, um, I, I maybe shouldn't admit to this, but I, I had a little half glass of wine <laughs> right before I got up on stage and that helped a lot. Um, and, I think another thing um, that helped me with the nerves was just remembering that I had a lot of people in the audience that cared about me and even more people that were waiting for the video itself to come out and who wanted to watch me share this idea and, and you know, support me. And so remembering that you've got a team behind your back is is always helpy, helpful to calm the nerves. You know, that's something that a lot of people have commented on in other interviews today. Just remember the why. Remember who you're representing and remember what you're there for. And it's not about you. It's about them the cause so good for you all right what was uh, this is the cut for time question what was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out yeah that's a really interesting question i i actually feel like i was able to get everything i wanted into the talk but what i wasn't able to do um was enough research i i if i had to go back um i would have loved to um, run the same experiment with with different poems. Um, if, for anybody listening, if you haven't seen the talk itself, um, the the way I run the experiment is by um, taking a stanza of a famous poem and replacing as many words as I can with synonyms that have these different vowel concentrations. I would have loved to iterate on that and just do it with um, several different poems. See see if the correlation is stronger um, and, and get some more data out of that. That's that's one thing I would like to do, and and that just came down to to a timing issue. So it was less about the talk more about the life we live and all the responsibilities we have to do these other things or maybe it's the next talk that's right yeah i like your i like your version better yeah yeah well what's a, a tip a technique or a tool that helped you you know, I'm so glad you asked this question because right before I went up to get on stage, um, there was another, or I would say probably an hour before, um, another performer at um, the backstage with me. He he does slam poetry, and and he was like, "Hey, do you wanna do you wanna engage in this memorization tool with me?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. What is this?" Um, and he goes, okay, we, here's what we do. We both, um, stand in front of each other, make eye contact, and we're gonna recite our memorized speeches at the exact same time. So we're gonna talk over each other. And it was a fascinating memorization tool, cause you're just, you're looking at somebody else who's saying something to you, and you're trying to focus on what you're saying. And we did that several times through, and, and what that does, it, it basically forces you to focus on what you're saying, ignore all the distractions, mm -hmm. And then the second thing that was great about that was that I realized there were there were three or four points in my own speech where I would get distracted by what he was saying. And so I actually went back into my own document and I edited those parts. I was like, I'm clearly my brain's trailing off during these sections. Let me go and edit and, and choose more action verbs and, and shorten this down. That way I remember to stay focused and engaged with my entire talk. So it was the best memorization tool I've ever learned, and I, I recommend it to everybody who would prepare for a speech like this. You know, I've never heard that before, and I actually do something very similar to prepare. I, I look in the mirror, and I shine like a flashlight or a ring light in my face and try to, you know, get in a chicken staring contest with myself. <laughs> uh, but doing that with somebody else, so what was that, like a cognitive dissonance kind of thing, and it, you had to you know, keep, <laughs> keep locked yeah. here, but then keep your agenda in, in your brain and your mouth. And, and, and then it, it exposed the weak points for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I think uh, the benefits are twofold. One, I think eye contact tends to make people nervous if they're speaking. Um, and so that was one thing that I yeah. hadn't practiced too much of was was once you're up there on stage, you know, you if you make eye contact with somebody you recognize or somebody who's who's sneezing or making a funny face like you don't want that eye contact th- to throw you off and distract mm-hmm. you. And then two, yeah, it's really um I, w- I found myself so interested in what his speech was and what he was talking about. And so I, I was like, wait, I can't I can't listen to this guy. No, so no matter what's going on around me, I have a job to do. And my job is to communicate this idea as clearly um, and as engagingly as possible. And so it just it fo- it turns your brain into hyper focus mode, which is a great a great thing before you're about to give a talk. <laughs> We've been enjoying a really fun interview with Elizabeth Shazel, and she gave a talk called The Power of Letters, which you can see by typing it into YouTube, or if you don't want to type all that into YouTube, or you're driving or working out or doing something like that right now, just go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com, click the button, click the link, one click takes you right there. you got to check out what Liz has discovered and how she lays that out, as well as you want to connect with Liz. You want to go to her LinkedIn profile. I'm going to have a link to that LinkedIn profile right there in the show notes. Liz, uh, we're right back to you with the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Yeah, um, I would say if I had to give Talk Universe a piece of advice, it would just be um, to be yourself. Um, I I recognize that this was going to be kind of my first introduction to um, the Internet world. You know, anybody could look up this video. Anybody could find this for the rest of my life. And I I wanted it to be a topic I was proud of. But I also wanted to recognize myself up there on stage. And so um, I I obviously am only a few months out from giving the talk. So I hope this feeling rings true in the future. But I, I do think that the person you see on that stage is the person that I am in my life. And so that's my advice is just um, continue to be authentic and and whatever you're speaking about, um, people are going to be excited to learn about it from you if you're passionate. So use that to your advantage. Elizabeth Shazel, thank you so much for coming to the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. That's a wrap. Great job. Awesome. Thank you. That was so much fun. That's awesome. Great job. Thank you. you. You've got several more today. <laughs> I've got, actually, I only have three more. Just checked it. Wow, it goes oh. fast. I actually, I get more energy. I get so much more energized when it's a fun day like today. Back to back to back to back, you know, no breaks. Ten people, I think seven or six people today. Just great. Yesterday, there were people that I couldn't find on Skype, and they didn't find me. And there were, there were like uh, two or three people that either rescheduled ahead of, I think one person ahead of time oh, wow. and then two people I I was not able to get a hold of. Oh, uh, wow. Imagine that. And that's, that's <laughs> kind of a bummer because you're like, it oh, is. Oh, another great interview. And, and so I actually prefer, I would rather have, you know, six or seven back to back or 10 back to back than four with gaps. Yeah. Uh, just from an energy uh, perspective. So, uh, so much fun. All right. Looks like we didn't, we got a couple of thumbs up here, which is great. Uh, I will go back in and live tag, uh, you on this video when I have a chance to do so. Uh, I am actually, let's have a private moment here. I'm going to go off of Facebook live. Take you care. Bye, Facebook. Bye bye.